Go for it. What do we got here? Well, it seems to cool down. Any power left on there. Take that off. Move this down. And there it is. One ugly piece of very warped plexiglass, but generally uh, not bad in the center area. In fact, it's kind of like an art piece. <laughs> Anyways, it ended up working out pretty well. You can see the profile of the pieces that were set at the electrode plates. And uh, the big question I have is, was this actually hot enough during the making of this electret? That's one question we do not have an answer to yet. But supposedly, just short the plates. Oh, there's plenty of uh, static on there. That's uh, it's a good sign. Yeah, that's uh, it's a good sign. It is remaining charged. Wait a second here. Yeah, there's more static on the surface, so this is a good sign. I might feel a little bit. Of course, there's probably all kinds of charges on the ground here that are drifting back in and being neutralized, so I guess it's time to short the thing out and put it in some foil and see what it does. We do have the other one that we made. Okay, so we're here at the uh, Falcon Space uh, Alternative Propulsion Engineering Conference lab, and we created today our first working electric. It is made out of acrylic, and you can see the, the sides of it are not the electric electrics in the center over here. Um, an electric is basically a magnet for static electricity and we have it covered in aluminum foil and watch what's going to happen as I bring the aluminum foil closer. It grabs onto it like that, holds that in place, it's holding it against the force of gravity. Coming up the polymer are oriented according to the static field that was applied while it was created, which was around 50,000 volts. In this case we were at 48.5 kilovolts in order to make this electret. That's made it. of a quarter inch piece of acrylic, seven inches by seven inches square. Severely warped on the edges, but the uh, center came out very, very nicely. And uh, that's perfectly all right, because that's really the area that matters. And uh, we could trim all the extra junk off. Otherwise, it's quite beautiful, but it does seem to be maintaining its electrostatic field. And even now, you know, nothing connected to the other side. You can see it's still electrostatically attracted to just that that ground reference point for the foil. And if not for the foil being, you know, two layers thick, it could probably hold it upside down. So this is not bad. It does seem to be holding an electrostatic field. And this is a pretty good sign, so now I think we just have to figure out how we're gonna do our gravity test experiments. We'll we are playing with electris. Now the reason why it's dark in here is because we're gonna show you a little experiment of what happens. We can't really see the light bulb, it's kind of dark. There's a light bulb, a fluorescent light bulb, that we are going to attach. Oh, you can see it flashing on and off. Now what is happening here is we're moving these plates up and down next to the electric field created by the electric. And that converts our mechanical motion energy into electrical energy. And that allows the fluorescent light bulb to light up. Now here's the interesting thing. If I only lift this plate a small amount and touch the bulb, it only lights a small amount. If I lift this plate a very large amount, it lights a larger amount. So there is a distance at which it's, you know, diminishing returns, but just a little bit away from the plate, you're not really going to get a huge amount of charge change because the electric fields from the plate, from the electrode itself, are still present in that area. So at least a spacing of one inch lift is sufficient to separate the surface plate from the electric fields and provide charge. But it's surprising, you know, just how much charge you're able to draw off this thing. And uh, another interesting observation, so I'll move the electret plate around while keeping it grounded here. And now what's going to happen is when I lift this up, it should develop more charge. An even brighter flash with the visible spark. Not bad much more effective than simply a conventional electro force. Now I'm going to show you what's going on with the light on, just so you have an idea. The uh, fluorescent bulb is not attached to anything other than 
that plate that we're moving up and down the electret above the electret. The electret, of course, is that piece of plastic. Acrylic. And you can hear, if you listen very carefully, you can hear the spark discharge. Charge. Discharge. Charging. This is probably going to snap to me, and it's probably going to hurt. Ah, didn't hurt too bad. I can deal with that. Okay, so this is the issue that we're having. Here is a classical problematic digital scale. And here is a charged not electric. In one direction we have 63.308 unstable grams. <laughs> if we flip it around, remember we're comparing to 63, now we have 62.252. Anti-gravity! That's right. Flip no. it back around, but what do we have? 63.2 and flip it back around and 62. Wow, look at that. We have a whole gram of difference between one side and the other. It's now, practically floating. Is, yeah, now, and then, now why is that? Electrostatics. It, it, it couldn't be because, you know, there's charge on the surface that's causing this maybe to be attracted to not only the scale and its surface, but the table beneath it. You think? You think? Because if we do, you know, some more of this uh, sparking and arcing. You're crazy. You know, it is what it is. So, uh, <laughs> that doesn't hurt. Of course it hurts. I'm just used to it. Okay, but here's the issue. So we've seen like, a gram of difference before, right? Now what do we have? Now we're spaced away. Ooh, Look at that. Better. Okay, let's see. 62.277. We'll flip that over. Try not to tip it over this time. Yeah, this platform. Not made for this. Let's see, 62.3, 60, uh, let's see, 62.34, look at that, pretty much the same, but, oh, we get rid of that, and now we're close to the table. Look at Ooh. that, we lost almost four grams, it's amazing. Magic. Four grams, just by uh, placing it close to the table. That's amazing, look, Pinky's so excited about that, she actually even left the room. Pinky, what's going on? We're doing anti-gravity in here. That's right. Get back in your bed. Ah, oh, her food is empty. Let's go fill it up. I'm just hoping that this isn't the uh, the only thing that we're observing with these electrodes. Mm, I really, I really hope so, because this is like they this are is, quite electrostatically charged. This is very underwhelming. Very underwhelming indeed. Yeah. It may have an electrostatic Electrostatics. charge. Here's our pile of electrets, and they all work, and they do exactly what he's showing right here with that piece of silicone. They're just permanently static or semi-permanently static. But either case, we have a measurement error issue, and that measurement error has everything to do with the, around, the uh, surrounding surfaces. If we place this on suspension strings evenly distant between the ceiling and the floor, we'll get the same measurement in both directions. And that's the problem. Exactly. Thank you for the demonstration.